Sports betting is already a highly contentious topic for a lot of people, but what happens when you throw in sponsorships for not only companies, but also individual athletes? Things can get really messy, and in this episode, we try to unpack it. Tennis is the third most better sport in the world behind soccer and horse racing. And the ITF, the International Tennis Federation, actually makes a lot of its money directly from the, the betting sector. So according to the Sports Business Journal, the ITF is currently in a five-year deal with a company called Sport Radar, and they are responsible for taking all the data and making the live scoring and the, all the information for the sports books to make the odds. So whenever you get those... Texts from those guys after you lose a match about how pissed they are is because these guys make the information available to to the world. Basically, they take it from the ITF and make it available to the world to see what's going on. And I mean, what information? So, like our live scores, our records, all the stuff. They take the information and they break it down into a, I guess, whatever algorithms that help the sports books put out the odds. Okay, right, and. This deal is going to end this year, and they're set up to make another five-year deal for an undisclosed amount with in front better. And this is weird to me because it's strange that the ITF can benefit from, I guess, directly from betting stuff, and we can't, um, let's say, participate as athletes in that ourselves. Like, if a betting company wanted to sponsor me, I couldn't take it. But for some reason, the ITF was able to take this money and... And I say, I guess they fund the tour or whatever their missions are. Even further than that, in 2015, they had a deal with Betway, which is similar to, let's say, DraftKings or Stake, it's like these these sports books, or these online sports books. And they ended that deal prematurely in 2017 because David Haggerty, the president of the ITF, said to a CNN reporter that he was committed to ending match fixing inferring a conflict of interest between commercial deals with betting companies and tennis. And he also said that the on-court verbal abuse of players and trolling on social media uh, with observers suggesting that the, the court branding from betting companies can encourage spectators to try to influence the outcome of the match by attacking players verbally online. And a, bet, a Betway spokesperson responded to that and said, we don't see the correlation between bookmaker sponsorship and internet bullying, which unfortunately exists in all walks of life. Now, you could take Haggerty at his word, but what was strange to me was that this year, in 2024, they signed a deal with Stake. It's the betting company that Drake is Who always... Who signed a deal with Drake? ITF. ITF. For the, for the Billie Jean King Cup and Davis Cup. So if you saw the court, they had, a, they had the signage for Stake. And you would ask yourself, like, what's different between 2024 and 2017? Like, why all of a sudden is betting okay to be in the sport of tennis? And the answer to that question is a company called Cosmos. Remember Gerard Piquet? Yeah. He was the lead of this company called Cosmos, and they came to a deal with, with the ITF for a $25 million, no, 25-year, $3 billion deal with the ITF to take the Davis Cup and the Billie Jean King Cup and make it more attractive to get bigger sponsors and TV deals. That's why in 2019, they changed the format. Remember when they went from the home and away to these group stages? That was, that was an attempt to make the Davis Cup format more condensed and attractive for these, these sponsors to have everybody in the same spot at the same time. They thought they would fill up these stadiums. But remember that this kind of flopped, like... When you look at the Davis Cup stadiums now, it's not the same as it used to be. Remember how you would have fans with the drums and the horns and everything, and it seemed like if you had Switzerland playing, let's say, I don't know, Kazakhstan. You might not know anyone from Kazakhstan, but there was still like a, there was this vibe that Davis Cup, that, that Davis Cup was kind of lost now. And that's why Cosmos, after a few years into the deal, they wanted to pull out. In 2023, 
they ended their deal with the ITF. But they were paying the ITF between 30 and $40 million for all of those years that they were in partnership with them, besides the COVID years where they dropped it to like $10, $12 million. How, where was this information from? Uh, the Sports Business Journal. Right. It's like basically the New York Times, but just and you for... you just read about these deals, like... Yeah, I signed, up for the, all... I signed up for the, let's say the, what do you call it? The, the login, I logged in, I registered for the journal, and I could read two for free. Okay. And I, <laughs> and this, this, stuff, this stuff is all in there, okay. right? So in 2023, when Cosmos dropped out, the ITF decided to still do Davis Cup and Billie Jean King, King, Billie Jean King Cup on their own on their own money that they had reserved from this big deal they got from Cosmos. And then, because that money ran out now, where did they run to to get money for the, for the next year? Betting. They went back to betting. So, I think that it's strange that the ITF and I guess any, I guess, big organization is allowed to benefit from betting our players out. So like in their press release, they mentioned that this new deal is going to be the greatest in integrity. We had the ITIA draft to paperwork with stake and it's going to be the most, I guess, integrous betting deal ever. And I read the, the let's say the rules in the ITIA for betting no covered person shall directly or indirectly facilitate, encourage, or promote tennis betting. And then under, it says, actions by tournament support personnel, which are taken not in an individual capacity, but solely in furtherance, or, uh, in furtherance of and or pursuant to a commercial agreement of, of an event which is permitted under the relevant governing body's rules are not facilitation. So what I took that to mean, and I could be wrong, is that Anybody who's covered under the ITIA, whether that be coaches, players, staff, whoever, cannot personally benefit from a betting company. But if that company is going to be sponsoring, let's say, the ITF on the whole, and I guess it can push the sport forward in whatever way they, de- they define that, then it's okay. So how do you feel about betting in tennis? Do you think that, that, that it's fair that the ITF can benefit from it, but players couldn't themselves? Uh, that depends. I mean, depends on if the money that... Cause, okay, what's the reason for... What's the reason that they give for why we as players or coaches or, like, I guess... They, they were saying that it's increasing the chances of match fixing and it's also, it's also increasing the online hate and abuse of players. And I mean, I don't know about the online hate, but I feel like it probably would increase the... How so? Like better, because then, like, you would get closer to that that world. Like, for example, me, I'm not, like, I'm not close to the betting world at all. Like, I don't know anything. I don't even know how like odds and all this stuff work. Even like in football or whatever. Like, I I see like social media jokes about parlays and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I have a little understanding about that, but like, I don't I don't understand betting at all. But like, let's say in another world, I can be sponsored by a betting company or whatever, and mm-hmm. I meet this guy. And then all of a sudden, there's all this knowledge that comes to me and information that comes to me from their world and how much money is, how lucrative it is, then I can be tempted. You know, it's like, it sounds to me like an alcoholic that's recovering from alcoholism is chilling in a bar. That's how it sounds I don't, to me. Because like, I'm sitting here at 400 in the world, doubles, 300, whatever, not making money. And then if I get sponsored by a betting company, then all of a sudden, like, hey, let me just fucking double fault a few times and... You know? I see it the opposite. If uh, since you'll make more you money, you'll be, you be making you money, and you have a contract with this company, and the rules of the ITIA still exist. Where if but you let's not act like a betting company is just gonna come and give Justin Roberts, it's not about Justin Roberts. Huge. It's not Justin okay. Roberts. It's it's whoever yeah, Alcaraz, I mean, whoever. I'm sure that you think that yeah, that, that, that these companies would Alcaraz, prefer to. I don't think Alcaraz and these guys are the, are the problem. I think the problem is going to be when it comes down the line to like the outside of the ATP and like the ATP tournaments. It comes down to like challenges and futures and the the girls like WTA is coming down into the ITF. Like I think that's where the problem is because then people like at our level are not making that much money. But a betting company is not going to be the person to come to you and say, hey, lose this much. 
Yeah, but you're going to be, I think, like, like what I just said, like, I don't know anything about Bethan, but now I'm going to, if for whatever reason, I have information on a betting company now, like I've spoken to someone, whatever, they tell me this is how much money people are making from bets and stuff. All of a sudden, maybe I, be, I may be tempted. But you will get caught. Huh? You will still get caught. Like You think everyone who bets gets caught? No, like, all, like what I'm saying is that people today are not allowed to get sponsored from betting companies, yeah. and many of them still bet. Like, the, yeah. the process... I think there will be more people betting if more people know like how that process works. Like if you learn how that process works, more people are going to think, oh, maybe I can get away with it. Maybe I can give it to go. That's what I think at least. So like in that way, it makes sense. Like if, if like you refer to LeBron, like in the, in the thing, like in the NBA, I don't think NBA guys are worried about, about money. I don't think they're going to, they're not worried that an NBA player is going to miss a free throw or something. I don't think. But it's happened. Also, like recently, the guy, Michael Porter Jr.'s brother got caught for betting on games and he got caught. Like, I don't think that you getting money from a company is going to make you more likely to take the risk of ending your career based on betting. It's not about getting the money from a company. It's about understanding how the company runs. Then you would understand that it would be so hard for you to do that sustainably and not get caught. Maybe, yeah. You, Evan, do you think that that being sponsored by a betting company would influence the outcome of matches and, like, the integrity of health? I want to say no, because if someone really had the... was down to bet and had the guts to take that risk, they're probably going to do it anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. It could go both ways, but it's kind of like, I feel like if your girl's going to cheat on you, can't like protect her like <laughs> <laughs> like if she's gonna cheat she's gonna cheat you know yeah, you have to stay inside. <laughs> yeah exactly you cannot go to the bottom even if you tell him like not to do anything it's there's no point if she's gonna do it anyway yeah <laughs> exactly but do you not find it hypocritical so like, no i do find it hypocr- in 2017 I think, yeah. the guy says hypocritical because if the itf's opinion is that they're looking out for the players so maybe they don't see it that way they're looking out for it as they're making money from a betting company and that bet, the money that they make from the betting company is going into the tour and that's going into the prize money for the players. I'm assuming that's They came they're out doing. in 2017. The president said that having commercial deals with betting companies is not good for our sport, basically, is what he said. And he, is he the president now? Yes. It's the same president that David said Hagedy. that back yes. then. Yes. Now. And then the Cosmos deal falls, falls through because they realized that this new format is failing and we're not going to make money back on this deal that we're trying to do with ITF. And as soon as the money runs out from this deal, they go right back to Benning Company because that's, that's where the easy money is. So is it an integrity thing or is it simply just a money thing? Because I'm not saying that I'm some investigative journalist and I have facts, but the timing looks weird to me that as soon as things are not that easy to come by with money, they go right back to Benning Company. And they come up with this statement with that the ITIA came in and all of a sudden now it's going to be so full of integrity to deal. Like, it's better. Better than it's better. Like, what, how much could change in the deal? And if players are going to do match fixing, it's gonna, they're going to do it anyway. Like, it's not like... I just don't think that it's fair that they get to particip- participate in that if they want to, if that's in their morals and in their... If the money is in more important than the integrity of being involved in that kind of stuff, I don't see why they can and players can't. Because but it's not the same, the same But the same rules apply. Like if you but it's get not caught better and you're out of tennis, so it's your problem, I think. I think it's the player's problem. But it's not the they, ITF, they decide to, to the match fix it. It's not the tennis player that can bet on matches. Like the ITF accepting a betting deal, like they cannot bet they cannot be influenced and do matches. But like if I get sponsored by a betting company and then I meet this person and this person explains to me this is how the whole project works. Now I have more information. Maybe I can... But I don't understand what you're saying. Because, like, because I think you can't... Comp- it's like apples to oranges. Like, ITF is not a tennis player. You know? It's like them accepting a deal with a betting company is not the same as a professional athlete accepting a deal with a betting company. To me, the, the problem is integrity. Like, if you're going to talk about integrity, then and, and betting 
having deals with betting companies being bad for the, for the game of tennis. And you walked away because maybe they were in talks with this company saying, we're going to have all this money for you guys down the line. So they're like, okay, we can pull from this deal and we can go in this, this direction. But now as soon as the money isn't there anymore, they go back so to this thing. So do you think that everyone, like, the, like ITF, ATP, whatever, are also players should be allowed to have better company? Like, I don't care team. either way. I That's think not, No, but I'm asking you an opinion. Do you think everyone should or everyone shouldn't for integrity? Reasons? I think either or. Either everybody can participate and you live with the consequences. Like either we can all get money from betting companies and if a player decides to, whatever your scenario is, go and do more match than they would have before, then that player gets banned. But if it's going to be that, then that's the risk we take. But if it's going to be that many companies are bad for tennis, then it should be bad all around, and we should find money for somewhere else. I do you think it's bad for tennis? Not necessarily, no. I think it's probably good. It's good. People think will it's watch good. tennis it's money. Who and people went and watched yeah. before, yeah. Like people who have no clue who I am are in my DM talking about you, <laughs> match fixer, blah, 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 blah. And I don't even know, it. I don't even know how to stop, read it all. Stop making it seem like it's so nice. Normally it has to do with racism. Yeah, yeah, but so. we're trying to monetize this video, so but like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't think that you getting money from a betting company would influence you to match fix or not. Either you want to play tennis and be in, and have integrity, or you don't. Like, I don't like, I don't think that that would influence anybody in a positive or negative light. I don't, I don't see it. I, I only actually see it helping because if somebody could make some more money they would be less likely to take a risk that would hurt their career for no reason, in my opinion. Like, I don't, I, I just think that there should be a, a line. Like, if we're going to be all about integrity and, like, whatever, and thinking that betting is some nefarious thing, then do away with it. But because we know it's the third most bet on sport in the world and there's money there to be made, we're going to act all of a sudden like he didn't just say that it was bad for, for the game. Hey, what's up, guys? Sorry to interrupt the episode. If you're able to, it would mean a lot to us if you can subscribe to the channel. That's the best way to support us, help us to continue to make cool episodes with cool guests, and really gives us the best chance to grow as a business. Thanks so much, and enjoy the rest of the episode. So how would um, like individual tennis players, how would these deals work with the betting companies? It's the same way it works when you watch a podcast. How, and, is, and how they, is it? They do add. You post on your, you post on your, you post on your Instagram. I to the podcast. I just hit forward until I see. The that's, the, that's, that's the that's the that's the company's Don't problem. Don't do that when we run ads, by the way. But that's the company's <laughs> problem. But yeah, but what I'm asking you is like, or how does what it if, work? Like what actually, if, what, how does it work? Is what I'm saying to you. They see you have an audience, and they say, "How does the betting? How does the betting company deal work?" Is what I'm asking you. What do you mean? I don't understand. What, I don't understand that question. Like, how does it work, bro? Like, how how? Bro, we pay you. You get sponsored we, by a betting company. So, it's the same way you work with LeBron. Yo, we pay you a mi- we pay Am you- I speaking Spanish? I'm asking how does it work? I don't know how it works with LeBron. How does it work? He did a, he did, he did a commercial saying, okay. when you're going to go bet on sports, use Jeez. this sports book. Simple. Okay. That's it. And that's his end of, that's end of his deal. So that's all he has to do. He has to just say, just use this. Like any other, like any other sponsorship. Yeah. What do you mean? No, it's not? Yes, it is. How do you, how does our pro string of sponsorship Yo, work? Buy a pro stringer. Yeah, that's not the same thing. That's not a hey, use if you're buy a pro stringer, buy a pro stringer. It's use our discount code. So I'm asking Yes, you, bro. There, it's the same thing. It's not the same thing because in better Evan, what is happening right now? Listen bro? to me, listen to me. Let me just, what is happening right let now? Let me just prove They my say point they to say you. use code LeBron and you and you get thank you. 100 bucks to do whatever, whatever. Oh, thank you, you've explained. It's it. the same thing. It's not because what does that mean, bro? I don't understand. Bro, now you've said it. Now you said that you use code LeBron. Bro, that's, you, guys, I got speaking. I got speaking Chinese. Oh, can you just take a second and read <laughs> and, and, and just listen for a second? <laughs> just listen for a second, right? This is Pro Stringer, our <laughs> stringing machine, right? Pro Stringer doesn't pay us to just put this machine here, and if you're gonna buy a Pro Stringer, just buy a Pro Stringer. That's not the deal that we have. The deal that we have is if you want a stringing machine, you use our discount code. With Pro Stringer, you get money off a machine, and we get money from that machine. You that's only that's only if wait that's only if they hear and see the full ad. But because we have a place there, yeah, that's fine, and yeah. they want to use it, they buy it. That's fine. So if they listen, if so if LeBron, just listen, please so, listen, please listen. Well, it's ex- it's the exact same thing. Please listen, please listen. So what I was asking you is, how does it work in sports betting? And first you said 
All LeBron has to say is, hey, use this betting company. That's what you said. And then, after further clarifying, later on, you said $100 something. So what does that mean? $100 for what? Like, what are they going to... Like, you never how, heard of betting ad before in your life? Are you no, bro? I do not understand anything about betting. Like bro, zero betting. I don't zero, bro. They're, you're on a podcast. Buy a pro stringer, please. The the thing pops up and it says, uh, steak, whatever, whatever. Use steak, blah 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 blah. And if you use our code, whatever, whatever, they'll give you whatever fifty 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 dollars towards your first bet for free. Okay. And then people get hooked on whatever set that is, and then they keep coming back. Thank you, Justin. That's the same thing. I don't see the difference. But I didn't know. I don't understand how betting works. So I don't know. Like, I don't know. That you have to pay to use the service of a betting company. Do you have to or no? I don't. Like, I don't do you I don't have to sign up and just a subscription to a betting company, bro? Like, they, it's like when you go to a casino. Okay. Right. You and I have been to a casino before. What do we do? I've never been to a casino. You and I have entered a casino before. I've never, what I've never played a, cas- a game at a casino. Thank I'm saying the sports much. book, the bookie is the house. They put the odds out and you bet, right? You bet so and so is going to beat so and so. Yes, that is all I know. About and that. they have the odds, so they know who's probably going to win most of the time. Okay. So people around the world bet. Millions of people bet. Yes. And most likely, their odds is going to win. The, the betting companies. Yes. So people who go for well, the... Because people think that the underdog is going to... They're going to try to put money on the underdog or something. That, and if you bet on the, the favorable person to win, you don't get much, much of a return. Okay. And people, people want to win. They do parlays, they do this, they do that. And then they just make money. They have the upper hand in the scenario. Okay. So if they get money, like a, like LeBron says, use this betting company or whatever, and you get $100 to whatever the fuck. So they just have $100 to spend, like, free money to just try and make money back. Like, they just pick, this person's going to win, that person's going to win. Yeah. So that's the same thing a tennis player can do, is what you're saying. Is what they should be allowed to do. Bro, if you want to bet on tennis, use this, and I'm, I have this code, go. Simple. Want to bet on any sport, use this code. It's not just going to be a tennis app. It's going to be a betting app. Yeah, yeah. And I don't see how it's any different from any other company. It's just money that the players get for advertising the company. And if you have an issue with the kind of company that it is, then I think it shouldn't be in tennis at all if we're, if we're going to do that. I just think that's unfair, personally. I mean, I can see why like the ITF would do take the betting deals and stuff. I don't know if it's unfair, but... It'd be nice if the players could get some money from that. Like, it should be, in my opinion, it should be the player's option if they want to deal with that or not. Oh, realistically, like, let's... Realistically, how many pay- players are going to get sponsored from a betting company? You think? It doesn't matter. No, it matters. It's like, I'm just... How many players you think would get money from a betting company? Probably the issue... Follow me. I'm trying to not answer your question. Would be that the I like the betting company would probably rather sponsor Alcaraz, Djokovic, and whoever than the ITF. Because what's the point in going to the ITF? Like oh, I, I, I can go straight to the players mm. and I can spend. Let's say it's a hundred million dollar deal. I'd rather give ten million to these people who have a bigger audience than the ITF. It makes way more sense now. ITF does it that it. way. Yeah. So I think that's that's BS. Why? Because ITF maybe now they. This is what I was going to ask. What you just said is the betting company is going to want to sponsor Alcaraz, Zverev, Djokovic, yeah. Sinner, whatever. But these are the guys, in my opinion, that are in need. Like, not to, like, pocket watch or whatever. Like, these guys are <laughs> fucking Fuck amazing, like, tennis players. And they deserve, like, whatever money they make. But, like, this is not the group of people that I think are losing in the tennis game. That's what it's about. So, what I'm saying is, is maybe ITF's thought is that if they get... They get a big deal with a betting company. They can distribute the money throughout, like, further down or consistently to different people instead of only Alcaraz and... But that's Alcaraz any company. Cetera. Huh? That's every company. They, they, then, then they can just say, oh, we don't want you guys doing deals with, oh, with alcohol companies. Yeah. Players can't make deals. You can't make a deal with so-and-so. <laughs> no more deals. I, I, think I, think I think it's a slippery slope. I think it's unfair. The yeah. principle is wrong. 
Like, everybody's competing for our dollars, no matter what business you do. Us and the ITF and whoever, every, everybody. I was about to say some shit that's going to get us canceled on this podcast shit, bro. You ready for it? Say it. You ready for it? First of all, let me just say that we got so much shit on a Cine episode about being haters. I was going to say, can you be sponsored? Can a tennis player be sponsored by, like, you know, the Cine cream? <laughs> <laughs> well, in Italy, in Italy, right, the cream it, or the spray is legal. Like, it's just over the counter or something. I guess it's, it's not, not, it's not you, legal. You probably get tennis, sponsored by the company that, I guess, <laughs> makes that cream. So what if? But, like, you know what I mean? There are pros <laughs> right now advertising beer and whatever. You can't play a match drunk. You can't? I'm pretty sure you would get fined. <laughs> That's probably against the code of conduct. Oh, I had a crazy story recently. To In college, a friend of mine, I'm not going to call his name. If you're watching this, you're probably going to watch this. A friend of mine was playing in college, hated the person that he was playing. I can't remember if they, he lost the first time or whatever, but then he felt like he was so much better than this player. And it was his last match of the season at home or something. Like, maybe senior day, one of the last matches of the season, he drank, he put, um, like, one of these seltzers or something in his Gatorade bottle. Mm -hmm. And for the whole match, he was just drinking alcohol for the whole match. Killed the guy, then shook his hand and said, hey, by the way, I wasn't drinking water, I was drinking <laughs> <laughs> That is some nasty work right there. Dude, that was funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't do that, by the way. That's not funny. Have I, have, have I convinced you or no? Um, no. I yeah. I, I just think that with more information on betting, like to the the people lower down, that, that makes no sense to me. Give me more information on betting, bro. For example, I knew nothing about betting. That's before. you, bro. You know how many tennis players bet on other sports and other stuff. Guys love to bet. That's true. That you're one person. Like so, you think you think that most guys know what betting is? They are watching they soccer and they're watching themselves. you American football and they're betting. Fair enough. If that's the case, then then I don't know. Uh, and I think it's why do there are so many guys doing match fixing? <laughs> are there so many guys doing match fixing? They caught a lot of people doing it. Yeah, what's a lot? I, I'm sure there have been more than 10, 15, 20 people over the last ten years who have got better. And that's a lot. There are two thousand ranked players right now. And, and you think, the, you think the number will go up if they were making outside, money from the betting company? Outside of the 2,000 ranked players, there's another five to 10,000 players that don't even have points that are playing every week. So you think that the, what number you just said, 10 to 20? I, I said, I'm sure there's even more than that. Yeah, I'm sure there's that a lot. Is 10 a sport supposed 20? to be full of integrity? Yeah, that's a lot of people. 10 compared to 20, to 10,000, 20,000? Like, what percent of the people? If you yeah. have 10 murders and then 2,000 population, you would be like, well, that's a lot of murders. In 2,000, we're not talking about 2,000. 2,000 ranked players. If you had 10 you murders have... and 10,000 people, you would say that's a lot of people that are murdering people. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about, bro? I'm, I'm just saying that I don't believe that there's a correlation between, like, money being made legally from betting and tennis and people going like, oh, now I'm going to go fix matches. The, the, those things don't have anything to do with each other, in my opinion. I just feel like the people that are going to benefit from the individual like companies, like the betting companies, are going to be the top, top, top guys. And these are the people that... But it isn't the point. It's the, it's the right to do something. Yeah. Because like, is it by the tennis or is it not? It's, it's my opinion. Like, why, why can you decide when it's good and when it's bad? And for who it's good and for who it's bad for? It's... In my mind, because so they can't, they can't, they can't player, participate in the in the deal. What's, what's the rule with tennis? Like a tennis player is not allowed to bet on tennis, but you can bet on other things. Yeah, and that's how it is in like basketball, for example. A basketball player can bet on other things, but not yeah. basketball. So yeah, I don't know. What about golf? Golf is an individual sport. I didn't research golf. Why would and what an individual can sport? You match racing. Is there match fixing in golf? I guess you could just go up shit. Tight go hole. Yeah. How many times you hit the water on the day? <laughs> I'm sure you could. But maybe it would be, maybe that's the... For example, like okay. even in tennis... <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't think According to okay. ESPN, like I think Bob Bryan, Mike Bryan and I were, were fined like 10K because 
they were retired, but I think maybe one of them was in, or they were both dealing with Davis Cup. They were like captains or they were dealing with US Davis Cup. And they, apparently they, on social media, they shared something about a betting company and they got fined 10K. And then James Blake was sanctioned something because I think this year, they, they didn't disclose why, but something to do with betting company. Like, and he's not even a player. Like, they only want to be able to, they only want the organization to be able to participate in the money and not individuals because then the company would just go to who has the audience. I wish that there would be like, you know why in politics there's like debates like mm. Trump versus Biden and all these things? Why can't we have that in ITF? Like, why can't like a supervisor versus Nick Kyrgios just go and debate on in front of the tennis world? That's a good you know idea, I mean? actually. We should do that. <laughs> we should do that live on. Like, we should just, do that live on YouTube, just, and we be the moderators that just fire off like controversial topics, like, like. What percentage of cross the ball is illegal? Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're not scientists either, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Anyway, yeah, I think that that... I think maybe there's just information that we don't know. There must be some logical reason as to why they want I feel like that. you're so, like... You're such a person who wants to believe the good and everything. You want to, like... Yeah. Give the benefit of the doubt to the ITF and to everyone. Bro, there's when no it's, way the it's, ITF... There's people. no way what you're talking <laughs> about, dog. They had a deal with Bedway... Remember? Right? They ended it because of integrity and yeah. commercial reasons with tennis is not good for the sport. So, so, so. And then they lost money from a big deal they had. They thought we were going to make $3 billion from. That deal went away. And then two years later, they were back into betting companies, bro. It's simple. I think, yeah, it's simple. They were desperate. And they, if, if that's the case, and I don't fucking know. But if that's the case and they're desperate and they needed money as an organization, you made me so bad. No, you're telling me that the people <laughs> at the top, so you're telling me the people at the top of the ITF don't care about tennis players. They know for a fact that the money will go directly to big players and not to them. Yeah. Because the audience is way bigger. Yeah. It makes way more sense for the betting company. Yeah. And that's fucked. But that's right. How it right. Be. Like, like, it, so, no, what? That, no, no, that's not how it should be. That's how they think it should be if they want to help the whole of tennis and not just the top people that are gonna make money. But it's a slippery slope because where does that end, bro? That's like... Yeah, I just don't think it's a perfect world. Like, I don't think it's a perfect world. Because, because what happens then, Justin? They take away the betting deal and now ITF and ATP and WTF, whoever the fuck benefits from these betting deals don't have money, now what? No, no. Now it's what? Now what? Djokovic and Alcaraz and Sina, sick. Fucking zillionaires. Bajillionaires. <laughs> they can go to space with Elon Musk. <laughs> like, what happens to ITF now? I think that that's the ITF's like, get better minds to figure it out. I don't know. But I don't think that that's fair to the players. I just don't think it's fair. Like, as a principle. That maybe the, it's, it, maybe it's what it has... To certain players. I think maybe it's what it, ha- what it has to be done right now because it's the best way yeah. they can make money. Exactly. But in principle, I think it's, it's wrong because it, they are afraid that they will lose out. Yeah. I just think that in, in principle, it's wrong. But, like, if there's no betting deal... How much money you said they made? From from the, the betting company. They don't disclose that. They they, they disclose that the it must be something silly. Some they silly they, they disclose that the mining companies like the, the data company, like yeah. Sport Radar or Infront Better, uh-huh. the Sport Radar deal was seventy million dollars for five years and that started five years five years ago. This is the last year of that deal. So okay. I imagine the next one is gonna be bigger. So my question is you take that money away. No, no, they would still get that money. Because they're the ones who own it, the data. Uh-huh. The players don't own the data of the matches. So they will still make that 70 million. It's just now partnering with the sports book. So it's on top of the 17. Yeah. That's extra money. It's more funds. I guess the point that I was trying to make just now is if you take that money away, then where, where does that money come from then? And what, first of all, what's that money used for? Because I'm assuming, and like I said, I see the good in, in, like I refuse to believe that the ITF does not care. Um, <laughs> like, I, in my, it's my opinion that like they want to help tennis as much as they can, right? They're not taking this money and as much to, as they can. You think so? Within reason, bro. They're not like losing sleep over ITF every single over <laughs> Justin <laughs> Roberts every single night. I think, but like, I don't believe that they're making these deals not in the best interest of tennis. And that's my I opinion. think so like, the answer to the question 
would be the tennis the tennis uh, governing bodies coming together and let's say I don't know somehow getting on the same page with the ITF and the ATP, WTA, the Slams, and getting and even the PTPA and whoever and getting the money from the Slams to I guess the whatever you call it was it the splits like. I guess right now it's like seven percent for the men, seven percent for the women from the slums. Like they make like fourteen percent from the overall revenue or whatever it is. The revenue share should be higher, and then maybe they could funnel that down better through the through the levels. That might be the answer. But how do you do that? I have no clue. I just think that it's wrong to to stand on the high on a box of soap and be like, "Yo, betting is bad. Uh, we're not taking money from betting because you have some big deal coming." And the deal goes away, and I'll run back to bed and, and be like, "Oh, the ITA made changes to the to the contract, so now it's going to be full of integrity." And what are you talking about, bro? It's just money. <laughs> this is just a money. It's a money grab. And okay, it's going to help us now. I guess next year we have the twenties and the thirties, as, as opposed to the fifties and twenties, twenty fives. That's what I think. Okay, like that's the way I see it. Like I, I just. But do you agree that they also, that they ruined Davis Cup? Yeah, I agree that the format of that is terrible. Yeah. And how much do you think that these other events are better now? Well, I think I think that before the home and away is like the countries playing in their country and stuff like the environment and stuff was amazing. Like mm-hmm. now it's I don't know exactly how how the format is, but I just know that there's countries that are not playing in their home country, so the stadium's not full anymore. Oh, you have like, yeah seats upon seats open in these yeah. in these arenas, and then you had like. Djokovic played last week, a week before, against uh, Greece without City Bus in Belgrade, mm-hmm. and it's full to the brim. I mean, obviously, it's Djokovic in Serbia, but that's, that's the point. Yeah, it's exactly. like you have your hometown hero at home. Yeah. They're going to come watch you against whoever, and they're going to bring all the drums and the, the horns and the whatever. And I think, yeah, they, I think they, they missed the mark there, and for whatever reason, they seem pretty strong on keeping the same format i don't know why they're trying, trying to tweak it a little bit with like these qualifying stages and stuff but i don't know i think it's not great and i think that actually the atp has done a great job with like this united cup in the beginning of the year and um like labor cup i think they do a pretty good job like i don't i haven't personally like sat down and watched the full day of labor cup but i love what we get from it like the the changeovers you have like a couple of years ago you had federer talking to Djokovic about the match, like giving him tactics and stuff, and we had to see all this footage, and then you had Kaboli telling Alcas what, what to do on the changeover, and they're making <laughs> jokes and stuff, and I think that this kind of event is, I guess, what they tried to do with I t- with the Davis Cup, but they kind of just missed the, they missed the mark, and they're pretty stubborn, it seems. Um, but yeah, man, I guess we're going to agree to disagree about we should be done with the bed and all Like, I don't know if I fully disagree, that's not that's not how I would say it. I would say that there's more that we don't know. Like they, I I believe that there are reasons for the decisions, and until we at least hear the side of the story of why they believe that it's okay for the company as a whole to have a deal. You said it though. The integrity and the online abuse. Well, then I'm not there. Anyway, we're going to highlight a, a player right now. Hey, guys, quick break. Justin here from The Changeover. I'm going to talk about Pro Stringer. It's a great machine that I use, Jody uses, and a lot of other pros use as well. You can use it at home, on the road, really anywhere there's a tabletop surface. It takes me about 25, 30 minutes to string a racket on this machine. It is easy to travel with. Fits in carry-on, suitcase, tennis bag, no issues at TSA. It's a big money saver, and you can save even more when you use our code CHANGEOVER to get $100 off the machine. Back to the episode. Carousel just cracked up 300 for the first time in his career at 30. Shout out to Carew. Uh Today he tweeted, Today I broke 300 for the first time, yet I'd make more money working at McDonald's. I'm okay because of my online work, but I feel for my peers. The level is so high now, all the way to, to 400 at least. Go watch a challenger. Tennis, tennis outgrew the conventional top 100. Carew's stats this year are that he rose from a 13.55 UTR to a 14.16 in nine months. As of 
today. I guess he started a tournament this week in uh, in Antofagosta. I don't know what it is. Chile, he, I think, huh? In Chile. He is 46 and 14 on the year with two 25K titles and two challenger semifinal runs. And he's only made, well, I should say, he has made $26,000. I don't want to lead the... <laughs> I don't want to lead them to feel how I feel. Man said only. Like. <laughs> he has made twenty six thousand dollars with that kind of year so far. Do you believe that the cutoff in earnings is too steep in tennis? A guy ranked seventy spots higher than him for a twelve month period would make four times that. Yeah. So you feel like it's too steep? Yeah, of course. And you know, where you have any ideas where we could maybe get this money from? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but how? How? Well, I don't you know. think Caruso or well, Caruso probably I mean, could get sponsored by a betting company because he has a social media platform. Yeah. yeah. But who else? What's Caruso? Right? Three hundred. Three hundred. What's his three hundred? Like, okay, look at this. With all due respect, you were two seventy last year. Yeah. Your social media, you have what? A couple thousand. One, two, three thousand on Instagram or something. Yeah. A betting company is not coming to Evan and being like, hey. You know, so like, why would all of a sudden? No, 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 no. Not, not everything answer is better. <laughs> that was a joke that we just made. Oh, okay, okay. That was a joke yeah. I was making just now. I was just going back to the last point. All right. No, 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 no. Okay. Like, okay, 300 in the world. People might say, like, you know, bringing in any revenue, whatever, whatever. But I guess he is an example of what is possible if you dedicate yourself to, let's say, making the right kind of content and being. Yeah, I guess a personality. This is the point that I always was making was that if people like, all like I've said it before, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, like y'all have heard it before, the people who've been watching the podcast. But if Karu can do it, who's probably I would say one of the best players that makes online like social media content, but like there's also like Alberan started doing it, maybe not to Karu's level. Then you had Simon, you had the Tennis Brothers, you had all these other... Like, and it takes years. Let's, let's be, let's be I mean, honest. He's also it. very good at content creating yeah, and yeah. like making a storyline and all this stuff. But the point that I was making is if these guys, and Karu is like one of the best, but there are other guys who are not as good of tennis players as Karu is that are making a lot of money from social media and they're marketing themselves and they have fan bases. So if these guys can do it, like there must be a way, a system for like a tournament or the ATP or the ITF or whoever to assign social media like people to create storylines and narratives about players and stuff. Like I'm actually kind of excited. Like week after next, some of us are going to Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> and some of us made a mistake on the uh the withdrawal list. Yeah man. But I'm excited <laughs> I'm excited for that because the Not Your Country Club guys are doing that tournament. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what they have in store, but like I'm excited to see like what they do, like what their plan is for the week, because I believe that could be the future of tennis. Like if you can increase the storylines and the content creation and market the tournament better, market the story better, like maybe then people are more interested in supporting like the athletes that come to the city to play. Maybe they follow that for the rest of the year. Yeah, I think there's a few things that I think one could be, let's say, on the ATP, ITF, whoever, like, to help with the marketing side. But also the player, like, I know in the UFC, like, the people who are the most exciting are the ones who get the big fights. Obviously, you have to be very good at what you do, but they promote themselves, they're making funny videos, they're doing the behind-the-scenes training, you have the Paddy Pimblets and the Sean O'Malley's and the uh, Adesanya's, these people, like, they... They market themselves, and then whatever what they're able to do, the UFC can even magnify it. You know, yeah, yeah. so I think one is on players Which themselves. Is what Korea is doing, <clears throat> like when we went to Colombia, well, like I played the challenge in Colombia like a month, two months ago, and I believe that Korea was one of the players that they like asked to do a story, like a Instagram story or something or whatever. It's like. Is Karu benefited from this or is they like they are. Be benefited? You they know are. what I mean? Like they are. But I guess that's their way of also magnifying. Like maybe they're letting people know that Karu is in town. Like Karu had people watching cheering for him in uh, mm. in Colombia. Like more people than like some of the other matches around, you know, than most of the other matches around, I would say. I think the social media thing is, is powerful. 
And I think that that's actually in a lot of players' control. I don't think everybody says is gifted with, let's say, a great personality or being super good looking or whatever it is that makes videos go great. But everybody has a chance with the phone in their hand to make something and to try to, let's say, grow their audience or, or whatever. But we also can do some pocket watching right now if you want. I think the sitting is fun too. <laughs> Another way that I, I did some research. This man has been in, in Serbia the last few weeks and it's been raining every single day. So all these windows yeah, yeah, just yeah, going yeah, into yeah. information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing to do. But I'm thinking since this earnings cutoff is so steep, right? Is there a way that they could make the Challenger Tour livable? Like people who do well enough to get, I don't know, to where Karoo is, that they could be making more than 26K in nine, 10 months. And the ATP... Can I just say, for Devil's Advocate, yes. Karoo, it's like, okay, now he's 300, <clears throat> right? If he played, let's say he played the whole of next year at 300... He would have played Make much more money. He true. would have played challenges where he's he gets accommodation most nights. Mm-hmm. Like when obviously when you win, you get accommodation at challenges until the day you lose. The next day you have to move out. So he would be doing. He's obviously going deep in challenges. So you let's say that he has I'll, a decent year next year in challenges. He's making more money from the challenges. He's paying less for accommodation. This year, he started way low, so he had to work his way up, and he had to play Futures where, okay, he won the Futures, he won what, two titles, you said? Two titles, a good amount of semis. Yeah, so like, he, he's making less money, winning a lot more matches, but at the lower levels where he's not getting rewarded as much. So like, I think that if he plays a full year at 300, if he just has an okay year and the challenges, he's going to make more money than he is. I don't, I don't think so. I played like a full year at 300. And you made? It was the same. My twenty, the same th- as the year before. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure in my 2022 year, I made around thirty thousand. 2023. <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 2023. I think I made like exact same. Making the semis. Yeah, but then you had to pay. You paid less on like on hotels. hotels yeah. Stuff, yeah. But then also, isn't the travel like almost more brutal? Like you have to go. They don't have yeah. Like, there's not really. You can't any. just play five in a row. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it doesn't. I, I feel like they kind of because like because <laughs> like if you think about it, how much money do you make for making semis of a seventy-five? So he it's made, like he's, he's it's prepared. like three, four. What was it three, four, three k, four k? He made sem- semis in Bogota, seventy-five thousand challenger. That's thirty nine hundred. If you win a twenty five k, it's thirty six hundred. It's basically the same. And it's harder to make semis probably than to win a twenty five. Exactly. Yeah, but then you play at a nicer club, and like most of the time, they treat you nicer. They pick you up from. What are we talking about right now? What are we talking about right now, Evan? Evan, Evan, what are we talking about right now? Talking about income. Money, right? I'm not talking about people <laughs> smiling, smiling at you and people shaking hands when you come in. You're saying about livable, like making it more livable. Like livable as in like yeah, paying like, bills. I'm not talking about... Yeah, yeah. They pick you up from the airport most of the time. There's official transportation every day. You don't have to pay for Uber. They pay for your hotel for the week. So you t- you walk away with money and you spend less money But I have, to, I have to fly far every week. That's the... You don't listen to my talk? <laughs> I'm listening. I'm bringing your point I back to you because he just said it evened out. So you're just making points that don't matter. Okay. Sorry, I don't know why I'm shouting. I apologize. I don't know if it evens out, but it, it evens it it's out not a as, It's more. not as yeah. different as you think. Yeah, yeah, exactly, be. exactly. Yeah. Like, the perception is not the reality. Yeah. Because they do have swings. Like, they do have, like, like several in a row, like, in, in, in the country. relatively close area. But you still have to travel multiple times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like, when is there ever... There's almost never two in, two challenges in a row. There was Indian Wells. Those were fifties at the beginning of the yeah. year. Those two in a row. Okay, but I feel so like, that know. might be an answer. Like maybe having them actually maybe swing really easy, where it's like a drive in between, or having multiple at at maybe one site or at one city. But if we're gonna spend people's money for them, we could look at <laughs> <laughs> whose money are we spend ATP. Um, so we're talking about the top guys benefited. How would you say the prize money is at 500 level? 
ATP 500 level, the tournament. How is the money? How would you say it is? I don't know. I don't know how much money people make at 500. Probably one, quite a bit, no? One thing I want to clarify, the, the 2022 when I made the jump on the come up, I made 25,000 and the next year I made 30. So I made a little more, but okay. not, not substantially. Not, yeah, not significant. No big difference. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Just being real with the facts right here. <laughs> <laughs> I was being facetious. I was, I was basically saying that people who are playing ATP 1000s and 500s, are making good money. You're making a, a, a living if you're playing these yeah, events, yeah. right? And at these events, there's a bonus structure. So the top five finishers at the ATP 500 level for the year across the events, they are splitting $1.34 million across them. First place finisher gets $615,000. Second place, two hundred and ten dollars Third, two hundred and five thousand. Fourth, one hundred thirty thousand. Fifth, eighty k. Wait, this is for the people who do the best at- over, over the across all five hundred tournaments. We get the most points. Okay. And this is coming straight from the ATP's um, what do you call it, like rule book or handbook. And then at the one thousand level and the middle finals is shared the bonus pool. It's a twenty million dollar pool, and they do not disclose how it's distributed. So that's, and I'm not saying that we deserve this money or challenger players deserve this money because the guys at the top definitely are the reason why people watch tennis on TV and that's a fact and why the ad dollars being spent. But there is money there because the guys at the top who are making these finals and winning these kind of tournaments, they have huge advertising deals and they're making money all year and bonuses from their sponsors and probably going pretty well in slams too. So there is like twenty one and a half million dollars there that I'm not saying it has it should be, but I'm saying that there is money that could be Wait, used. Is there not that at challenges? There's is there a bonus system at challenges? As far as I can tell, the only bonus pool right now in the ATP for twenty twenty four is the Twenty one point three million dollars for the five hundred and one thousand events. Okay. okay. Working too hard these days. <laughs> See this is what happens when you don't go to the gym for for three months and then you get home and you feel motivated, you decide to go all in. I'm for th- like right by my ass, bro. Like hamstring kinda. Pull your leg. No no, you're supposed to stretch it out, like straighten it, no? When yeah, you say up high? Yeah. It went to it though. Sorry. <laughs> so as far as I can tell, and if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments, the only bonuses for the ATP this year are those, are those $21.3 million dedicated to the, the top finishers in the thousands and five hundreds. Okay, and sorry. And the point that you were going to make with this was what? Sorry. This was your point that you were going to bring up. No, no, but about the bonus system. You were ah, saying. you were saying earlier about the betting that the only people who benefit would be the top players and once again with this bonus structure the people who are benefiting are the people who don't need more money necessarily I understand that the 500s would get less top players and less often if there wasn't like some sort of incentive but I'm not even sure how much let's say Alcaraz or somebody would care but I guess it wouldn't be him who would care that much but maybe I don't know maybe ever somebody about this, these bonuses based on what I'm assuming that they make in the year. But if there was, like, we don't know where to get money from, this might be a way that I say top players might could sacrifice without necessarily, like, giving money away. And they would just kind of try to use maybe some of this $21 million to help boost the income for the players on the Challenger Tour. That was my thinking. Yeah. It just feels weird, like, it feels weird. It feels like charity, kind of, you know? Taking money away from the top and giving it to the wall. Yeah, and I, I don't believe that that's how we should do it, because I think that if tennis is such a popular sport and it has as many eyes on it as, like, 
I don't know, all, all these streams on ESPN and like all the slams and stuff. You can see the stadiums, like how many people go and watch for that. US how, Open broke attendance records this year. Yeah, right? so for how popular tennis is, I don't believe that what we need to do as a tennis ecosystem is like reallocate funds from the top to the bottom or whatever. I think just add more funds. <laughs> everyone, I think everyone. But I think this also is a new thing, this bonus structure, like yeah. to this extent. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't know yeah, what I'm going to get. It's good. Just, it's good, yeah. Okay. Like, I believe that these people, they have even more incentive now to, to go and, like, perform well at these tournaments. Like, that's fine. But like, mm-hmm. Do you think tennis as a whole needs to make more revenue in general? Or do you think they're being unfair with the way the, they make enough and they're being unfair with the way the revenue is split to the players? Wait, what do you mean? Sorry. Like, do you think tennis... Uh-huh. I guess ATP, ATP, ITF. Do you think they need to make more mm-hmm. money, or do you think they're making enough and they're just not, they're not I spreading they it out? Money. I well, that's not what it has to do. Do you think tennis is because making enough money right now for players to make no. more money? No, I don't think so. Why? They are. I mean, how are they? The grand slams no, make the record. grand slams just. Make the breaking records. Like the thing is that the the revenue split between the tournament and the players is yeah. crazy. The percentage, the, the, like one the percentage is way up. Yeah, yeah. it's like fifteen yeah. percent versus like basketball, whoever is like forty nine or fifty percent. That's true, but that's four tournaments. They were those four tournaments fund everything. Do they? I don't think so. They don't fund anything. Everything. Who makes the money at US? But they could. Yeah, you're right. So that money is only just for the tournament, like the. I believe that the the who makes the money from those tournaments are the people who host the, the tournament, who own the tournament, like the people who own the tournament. I mean, for the players, the for the players, tournament. like the the money. Yeah. So in that situation, the people in the Grand Slams who make they should they make, make more money. money. They should. They should, unless they want to figure out some way, like what you just said, like to funnel money down from those four tournaments to the rest of the tour. I, maybe they already have that. I, I don't know. They don't really but I, I just, my opinion is that like the whole, again, it goes back to the simple like thing of like storylines and marketing. Like that if, if Karu and these other like YouTube personality pages can, can do that, then why can't like individual tournaments like maybe they can create some sort of system where if you're hosting a future or you're hosting a challenger you're required to do this kind of promotion you know like to to get people interested like i i believe in that so i think that is just a, a opportunity which is why we started this pod well one of the reasons why i started the podcast in the beginning like why we at first the concept was not the podcast the concept concept was we wanted to figure out a way to market other levels of professional tennis and granted we've been doing it for over a year now we're not like we don't have that big of a following yet but um that's kind of the idea and it's just a different way than Karu Wood and Simon and these other social media pages and yeah I just think there's an opportunity there that we can somehow capitalize on I guess I don't want to necessarily go back into the betting thing too deep, but like, I'm a bit confused because earlier you were talking about like the top benefiting more and like how it's unnecessary. And then when there are these, let's say, extra funds that is ATP funds that could be used, let's say, for challenges or whatever, now you're not for it. I don't understand. Yeah, because those funds are are uh, made I'm assuming those funds are coming from the performance of the 500s like where does that money come from because yeah, if that's the case from the, from, the, from the revenue of the I guess from the events as a yeah. whole so if that's the case then it's fair if this revenue is coming from just some separate fund then we can well, where the okay. challenge of money come from now I don't know you don't think that they're funneling money down to challenge the events they probably are, yeah. Like, so what's the difference? Like if it, if it was just going to be what you 
what you make, you get, then probably charges price money would stay what it was. <laughs> then probably there's no charges. Yeah. No charges, no futures. Like this, I think that's kind of how these events work a bit. Like the ATP is responsible for this and yeah. the challenger tour. So like they can decide where to put this money. And these Masters 1000 and stuff, people who are winning these tournaments and who are going to get these bonuses, like you win anywhere, there's like probably a million dollars today. Like it's crazy money. Like I don't know. Like I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve it or that Alcaraz isn't the biggest star on earth or whatever. But I don't think that like the bonus is getting him out of bed for any of us. I think, I think he's thinking about the bonus. I think the bonus just ha- kind of happens, you know? Yeah. Like that money, I was just saying, if there was like, where could we get this money from? It's like, there's money there. And these guys are not suffering by not getting another huge bonus for winning 500s. They're, yeah. they're it great. Just feels wrong. It just feels wrong to me to, I don't know, remove what, these people already are making. But it, this is like a new thing that happened this year. Like it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. The money is there. Yeah, I guess my, my, my argument would have been different before it was implemented. If it was just a concept that they're considering doing, I think I would feel a little bit different. I think it started like maybe 2023. I think it's like yeah. the last two years I've been doing it. Yeah, I think I would just, I would feel different if it didn't come yet. Like if, if, if they were thinking about doing it next year or they were thinking about starting it and they're considering it, so I would the, be like... The I, question to me... Especially from the from the argument you had earlier about the top players would be like, so what were they doing this money with this money before? If there wasn't this what? like what were they doing with these funds before? Like if there wasn't these yeah. huge like bonus pools before, like I'm sure they had bonuses if they they weren't this substantial. So like what were they doing with the the funds before? Unless this is like some new injection of funds they got out of nowhere. But I don't know. Anyway, man. I want to see you compete, but it's been too long. Let's play a game. Shoot. Remember the rules? Everybody's clear what's going on. Which game? Which game? Same game. Can the audience know the rules? We're going to play first to three correct answers. You just shout the answer out. Gosh. If you're wrong, the opponent gets to rebuttal. If they get it wrong, one more, chance, one more chance at the right answer. And if you both get it wrong again, we move on to the next question. First to three correct answers. Is there a theme or a category it's 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 a nice jumble man it's fucking math <laughs> come on why do you say that cause he does this <laughs> that's what he does question number one hold on hold on hold on by the way I just want to say that I'm on a hot streak in this game you have one twenty row hot streak in this game when you win twice and you call it a streak that's how you know your confidence is low <laughs> that's how you know that the confidence <laughs> is cause I've been seeing some some messages in the comments you know about he's won a duo you know, we have Ryan. I don't think Ryan, if you're watching this episode, Ryan is like, he loves every episode if I lose the game. Ryan has not commented once since I've won a game. Ryan, what's going on, Let's go Evan. Come on, Let's go man. Evan. Come Question on. number one. What is the capital of Romania? Bucharest. Oh, he was just there. Yeah. Layup. I wasn't. But just in Romania. I was in the country. Yeah, I go to Bucharest, yeah. That should, be, that should be minus one. Um, number two. That's cheating. Which country is former pro Mario Ancic from? Croatia. Wow, Jody is a oh tennis whiz. <laughs> Math. <laughs> Why, you Why you look this? at me? Come on. <laughs> Four, Fourteen times three. Uh, forty-two. Fucking seventy-two. <laughs> 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 oh, he didn't get minus one for that. Yo, the man said seventy-two. <laughs> oh, All right. I'm gonna defend myself. That's a minus. Question number. You know, you know, like when you're doing math, right? <laughs> you put the one and the four, uh-huh. and then you said math by like by four. three, three, yeah. So I did. I got to the first part. You did four plus three and got seven. No, no, and then no. <laughs> but all the way. And then four, four times three is twelve. So I know the last number was a two. You just guessed, and I just fucking panicked after that. <laughs> <laughs> I just panicked after that. Oh, that was bad. Time. Okay, oh, two one. Jody, still up. Still up. Today, who was the highest ranked Chinese player? 
Male or female? Male. male. Sorry. You can't you count that. that. You can't count that. I won't count it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And also, count. don't do that. Why? You got you got you got Bucharest because he's Chinese. You got Bucharest, bro. I'm I'm American. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Okay, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Who is the highest ranked German? Alexander Zverev. I did it again. What is wrong with this guy? I just won the game. What's this guy's Jesus. problem? Okay. Because you asked a question about America. The question is male. Said, male, 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 male. You're right, you're right, you're right. I was being sexist. I'm sorry. Come on, bro. Who is the highest ranked male from Australia? Deminor. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. It's a pleasure. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. That's my fault, Evan. I'm going to call it a it's half a win. It's a half, it's a half win. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next I week. I literally won the game. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next episode. Peace and love.